Dear colleagues, hello, my name is Philippe Lefer. So I will present a case on uh, colon disease in a patient with left lower quadrant pain. So I'm working as a radiologist in Rousselare in Belgium. So let's go to the story of the patient, a 75 year old female patient without major antecedents, with abdominal cramps in three months, and now with more acute left lower quadrant pain since one month. She has clearly raised inflammatory parameters and there is a clinical suspicion of diverticulitis. CT abdomen with IV contrast was performed and the colon was filled with positive contrast from the rectum. In patients with a clinical suspicion of diverticulitis, we prefer to use positive contrast because in our experience, it allows us to better visualize eventual complications. So we have a rather long segment of wall thickening, 10 centimeters in this patient. And when there is wall thickening, I would prefer to narrow the window settings because you can better perform wall characterization. So let's look to the images. When we see to the wall thickening, we see there is a clear difference in two zones. So clearly hypodense aspect of the wall thickening here and a more hyperattenuating segment over here with homogeneous soft tissue density. That's an important feature. Another important feature is to look to the transition zones. So in the first proximal zone, there is a more gradual transition to the wall thickening from normal wall. So with a cone shaped aspect, whereas here in the second part, there is an abrupt transition from normal to pathologic wall to pathologic thickening. And on the other side, we even have overhanging edges. So abrupt transition with projection of the wall thickening on the normal colonic wall. So a very important feature. Another important feature is to, the look, to, the, to look to the presence of diverticula. We see it better in the broader uh, windows. Diverticula in the proximal zone, clearly here, all over the proximal zone, we see diverticula. Whereas in the distal zone, we don't see any diverticula. So absence of diverticula in the distal wall thickening. Another interesting feature is allowed us to see by the positive contrast. So we see the contrast distributing between the narrowed folds, whereas we don't see any folds in the second distal wall thickening, absence of folds, important. And here we see some pericolic infiltration at the first zone whereas there is no pericolic infiltration in the second zone. Coronal images to confirm the same imaging findings. And interesting to perform a sagittal reconstruction here to see the homogeneous soft tissue wall thickening, gray aspect, somewhat comparable to muscle density, whereas a Sagittal reconstruction here shows us clearly the hypodense aspect, so you clearly see the difference. Hypodense submucosa with presence of diverticula and some infiltration, so no diverticula over here. So to summarize, the long segments of wall thickening, zone one, cone-shaped aspect, diverticula, hypodense aspect, preservation of folds. Zone two, shouldering, no diverticula, subtle attenuation with muscle density and no preservation of folds. So what would you do in this patient? Would you go for a conservative treatment or go for surgery? So it's clearly that we need to go for a surgery. Why? Because the second zone has clearly malignant imaging characteristics, whereas the First proximal zone has benign characteristics and why? So the first zone presents with the typical water halo. And here, this is the advantage of using water instead of positive contrast because the water allows you to see three different layers, the central mucosa, which is hyperattenuating, Then the second zone, the submucosal edema, which is has a water density. And finally, you sometimes see the muscularis propria as a slightly hyperattenuating thin layer. This corresponds to benign disease, infectious or inflammatory, 
it's A-specific for telling which is, whether it is infectious or inflammatory. However, it's specific for benign disease. In the second distal zone, we have the gray pattern. So homogeneous, little enhancement, somewhat like muscle attenuation, no target appearance. So this is possibly malignant. To know whether it's malignant or not, we need to look to other signs. In case of a tumor, you will have shouldering, no diverticula. In case of benign disease, chronic diverticulitis, chronic ischemia, or inflammatory bowel disease, you will have the cone-shaped aspect. So in this patient, antibiotics were given for three to four weeks. Colonoscopy was performed after three to four weeks, and this was followed by surgery. However, colonoscopy was incomplete and CT colonography needed to be performed. So when we look to the 2D images, we see that in the proximal zone, the wall thickening has become less prominent because of the antibiotics. We see diverticula in the proximal zone and we clearly see the shouldering in the distal zone. Important to look in 3D from here to see the distortion of the folds and the clear tumor. So overhanging edges, shoulder formation, quite important. So surgery showed invasive adenocarcinoma in the distal zone with in the proximal zone diverticulosis with diverticulitis. And I want to end with the differentiation on CT colonography between chronic diverticulitis and the malignancy. This is not always easy. And we need to look to several signs, which is important to know that they are not 100% specific. So very important, as I explained, to look to the transition zone, cone-shaped versus shouldering. Presence of diverticula, presence or not present. Very important to combine these signs because this gives you a reliable diagnosis with the best accuracy. So presence of cone-shaped aspect and diverticula is uh, most probably benign. So less specific signs, the length, mostly a long segment in benign disease mostly a short segment in malignant disease. The folds will mostly be present in benign disease, whereas they are distorted and not present in malignant disease. Mesosigmoid can be taken in benign disease, mostly not in malignant, however it can be in malignant disease. Pericolic fat may be infiltrated in benign disease, Mostly not in malignant disease. However, in case of transferosal growth, you may have infiltration of the pericolic fat. The thickness, less thick in benign disease, thicker in malignant disease, mostly. Finally, nodes. You may see nodes in case of malignancy, mostly not in design. However, they may be present. So very important to look to the combination of signs to make the correct diagnosis. So that was the presentation of my case and I thank you for your attention.